good morning welcome to practice and as always please practice according to your condition let's begin so we'll start off with a bit of silence Supreme, close the eyes, go inward. Imagine you are everywhere, established in the hearts of all beings. Begin with the sound of Om three times to attract divine attention. Fix your mind on God alone. Rest your thoughts in God alone. And in God you will live hereafter. Of this there is no doubt. May all beings everywhere be happy and free from suffering enjoy this practice in our senses. May we acquire a strong desire for liberation from pain and suffering, and may we cherish no ill feelings against each other. Come to standing. So we'll start off by chanting the mantra for purification. If you know it, you may chant along. If not, just think about the the intention of purifying the space, the grounds, and all the psychic channels within, and then you derive all the benefits. Om ma pavitra ha pavitra wa sa wa vashtanga topi wa ya ha smarit pandrikaksham sa bahia vihantra has ji. Bring your arms up over the head. Open up the feet about 10 inches, charging breathing. From the soles of the feet, inhale all the way up to the body. Feel so you're pulling the earth's energy right up through to the fingertips. Holding the attention of the breath at the fingertips. Exhale all the way back down to the soles of the feet. Inhale. Again, draw the earth's energy right to the body. Visualize it rising up. Holding it at the fingertips, hold the breath. Exhale all the way back down. Inhale again, feel the energy coming up through the body. Feel the charge, the body charging up. Holding it at the fingertips, hold the breath. All the way down, exhale. Bring your arms down now, we'll continue with the exercises. These are exercises to help promote uh, detoxification of the body. So breathe vigorously through the next exercises in order to aerate the lungs and promote some um, heat to uh, remove those toxins. First, let's start off with head circles. Just loosen up the neck completely. Watch the body moving by itself. Imagine you're the witness. And then change the direction of rotation. Or 
great breathing with the movements. Inhale, exhale, continue. Inhale, pull the arms straight up. Exhale, pull down. Now in front of the body, inhale, exhale, retract. Now swing your arms back and forth. across the chest, squeeze her, exhale, throw the arms back, alternate across each time. And release, bring the arms up over the head on the inhale, exhale, toss the body down. Nice, easy swings. Last one, just stay hanging down. Lower body, stop bouncing. And then roll your way up slowly. Next, bring the arms up over the head. Exhale, come to a squat. You only have to go down as far as your knees allow. Move according to your condition. One more. Right back up. Pull the elbows out to the sides and we're going to twist from side to side. Exhale as you complete the twist on each side. Turn to the center. Next one, four movements. Again, the squatting, so go according to your knees. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, pull down into the tuck. Inhale, right back up. Exhale, swing down. Continue. out in front. This is starting position on the exhale. Inhale, circle around. Exhale, pull in and punch back out right away. Drop the arms by the sides of the body. Next one, very similar, but it's a circle in the corner. Inhale, all the way around in front. Exhale, pull in and then drop the arms down immediately. And release. Now from here, we're going to raise the left arm up, inhale. Exhale, bend to the right, right arm up, inhale. Bend to the left, continue. Next one, very similar. Left arm up, inhale, bend to the right, hold it for a moment. Exhale, release. Go to the other side, right arm up, inhale, bend to the left, hold the breath. Go deeper and release. Move according to your condition. Hold. 
out a little bit as you go deeper. And release. Try not to incur folds in the underside of the body as you bend. Inhale, carries you deep and long, or um, stretches you out, hold as you go deeper into the bend. Lose yourself in the sensations. Imagine all beings experiencing this through your own body. So therefore, make the practice as nourishing as you can, as beneficial as you can. Go for one more on each side. Reach out long. And conclude. Come on to the hands and knees now. Cat cow. Open up your knees about hip width. Wrists underneath the shoulders. Inhale. Arch the back. Exhale, round the back. Fire up the muscles of the core. Inhale, stretch the belly skin. Exhale, stretch the back skin. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Push the heart forward, away from the seat. Exhale, push it up right between your shoulder blades. Inhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, two more, inhale, exhale, inhale, Next, raise the right leg up. Inhale, exhale, swing out to the left. Right, sorry. And then release that side. Left leg up, inhale, exhale, swing out to the left. Loosen up the hip joint. Last one. And release. Come down onto the belly. Working the back muscles now. Join the hands behind the back. Squeeze the shoulder blades. Engage the buttocks. We're going to lift the, the chest on the inhale. Exhale back down. Up, down, anchor down to the lower body, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Down, two more, up, down, up, and down, relax. Drop the arms by the sides of the body, breathe in, breathe out. Next one, I'll demonstrate two options. I can raise the legs up, and as the legs come down, momentum brings the upper body up. Don't use your hands too much. Use momentum gained by the hips moving. Otherwise, you can just lift your legs and your arms. Just like that. OK? 
Okay, so it's a modification. Let's go for 10. Shins the hands, lift up and come back into child's pose. The next one has four movements. Come up on the inhale to high cat, exhale cobra. Back into high cat, inhale, exhale back into child's pose. Bring the seat all the way back and up and forward, chest forward, shoulders back, up and back. Up. Forward, and up, and back. Inhale, push the chest up between the shoulder blades, and then forward on the exhale, and then back up. Chest between the shoulder blades, exhale, back. Seat back and up. Forward, up, and back. Watch the body moving gracefully, and forward. And back. Try to keep the line back smooth. No kinks. No great sharp angles or folds in the lower back or the back of the neck. And back. Up. Forward. Up. And back. Flatten. Up. Rounding the back. Forward. Curve. Um, arching. And then back to rounding and then flattening and lengthening. Up, forward, up, and back. Lose yourself in the sensations. Up, forward, up, and back. Last time, up, forward, up, and back. Breathe in. Breathe out, soften. Next one, glide forward on the inhale into cobra. Hold it, hold the breath, exhale all the way back. Alternatively, inhale, come from above, come up into table and then the um, hips line between your hands, hold the cobra, head lifted and back, exhale. And again, come forward and hold, retreat, come forward, inhale, hold, and back, and again, watch the nose grounds you're doing, if you're doing a sliding version, hold the breath, and back. Feel like a snake creeping through the creeping through the grass. And up. And back. Use your arms to propel yourself forward more easily and with more power. Make sure you don't jam up the neck, drop the shoulders, remember. And then back. And again, come forward. Smooth action. Put the chest forward away from the seats. The lower back free of wrinkles and back. Two more. Hold the cobra and back. And last time, glide gracefully and come up and back. Take a moment here, breathe in. Breathe out, relax. And then come forward onto your belly. Slip over onto your back. Now, doing tucks, inhale, lengthen, push the heels out, extend the arms over the head, exhale. Squeeze the thighs into the chest, the chin twist, knees. Inhale, 
exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, back, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, Inhale, lengthen the temple, the breath as you tuck, push the lower back into the mat, squeeze yourself really tight. Exhale, release. Inhale again, lengthen as much as you can. Then hold the breath as you tuck. Exhale. Inhale. Go as long as you can. Hold the breath as you pull yourself in. Make yourself as tight and compact as possible. Release on the exhale. Inhale again. And hold and tuck. Release. Inhale. Hold the breath. Tuck. Release. Inhale. And then tuck. Release. Inhale. Stretch. Legs up, uh, like the navel, hollow it out. Hold the breath, keep it hollow as you tuck. Push the thighs in towards your body. Release, last time, inhale, stretch. And then hold the breath as you tuck. And release. Breathe in, breathe out. Last grand exercise. Swing your legs over the head, or as far as you can, and then bring the legs back down, and then pull your body up, pull the body over the legs. So if you need the momentum uh, to help you, that's okay. So you can, you don't have to wait till the feet are down, but if you wait till the feet are down, you're working your core a little bit more. So do according to your condition. Up and forward. Back, bring the legs over the head, hold the breath as you come up, makes it a little bit more easy. Just breathe in a way that allows you to do the movements more easily for you. Go for one more. Try to make the movement as smooth as possible. Next time, you bring your arms over the head, bend your knees, push the feet down into the mat, and come up to standing. All right, so now we're going to continue our warm up. Lift Surya Namaskar. So place yourself in the front of the mat. Bring the hands to the heart. Remember to offer up the practice. Imagine moving in sync with all beings everywhere for the benefit of all beings. Let's offer up the practice. Reach the arms up over the head. Pull the body down onto the legs. Bend the knees if you need to bring your hands flat on the ground. Then the right foot slides back, lower the knee, sink down to the seat, raise the head. Then come into high plank, lower down the knees, and bring the seat all the way back. Glide forward between the arms, coming up into cobra. And then roll over the toes back into downward facing dog. Right foot forward, if that was too much, lower the back knee. If the foot doesn't make it all the way, just use the right hand to move it forward again. Sink the seat forward. Bring the feet together, chest on the sides, head down. Come all the way back. Um, move your arms behind the head, hands behind, uh, back to the chest. 
reach the arms up over the head, press hips forward, go down, pull the body down on some legs again, bend your knees as much as you need to, to get your hands on the ground, left foot back, knee, to, um, knee down, come into high plank, lower the knees, bring the seat all the way back, stretch up the back, and then pull the arms to glide forward between the arms. Back into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Lift the seat up and back, melt the heart. Left foot steps quietly forward. Back knee down, sink down. Again, hips, the seat close to the heel. Foot, right foot comes into the left foot. Pull the body down onto the legs. Come up, stretch the whole front of the body. Hips forward. Hands back to the heart. Arms over the head, engage the buttocks. Keep the upper back engaged as well. Doing the back bend, bring the hands down, right foot back, lower the knee down, come into plank, Ashtanga Namaskar, knees, chest, forehead down, glide forward into the cobra, roll over the toes back into downward facing dog, bring the seat up and back, right foot steps forward to the hands, moving gracefully, connect the movements together like you're doing a dance, fluidly flow from one pose to the other. Come up to standing. Return to Pranamasana. Again, arch back to the extent that you're comfortable. Move according to condition. Hands down, left foot back. Sink through the seat. Come into plank. Lower down, Ashtanga Namaskara. Forehead, chest, chin down. And then come forward into the cobra. Back into Adho Mukha Savanasana. Left foot steps forward, quietly. Move as though you're not trying to keep the witness always without distraction. Always a fluid, graceful sequence of movements. Reach the arms up with add on. Come down over the legs, chest on the thighs by bending the knees, join the hands behind the back, extend through the crown, and then pull the arms over the head. Lift the seat, bring the head further down. Uttanasana. Release the hands now. Right foot back, lower the knee down, sink through the seat. Raise your arms up over the head. Kapiasana, crescent moon shape. And then bring the hands down. Step the feet back together into plank. Lower down knees, chest, forehead. Glide between the arms. Bhujangasana. Then Adho Mukha Svanasana. Right foot steps to the hands, back knee down, reach the arms over the head, stretch the body out of the hips, pull the body right out of the hips, use the arms to help. Hands land down beside the feet, left foot comes beside the right. Join the hands, extend the arms, and then bring them over the head, seat up high, push the body back into the legs. Then release the arms, bring them over the head. Hands back to the heart. Again, arms up, go down, lose yourself in the sensations, left foot back, lower the knee, reach the arms up and down. Watch the body moving with grace and steadiness and ease. The chances are the body will do exactly what you see in your mind, arch and then back into downward facing dog. Left foot steps, back knee down, sink through the seat, arms up over the head, and then hands come down, feet come back together, chest on the thighs, join the hands, extend, pull the chest forward as though you're trying to get beyond your knees, and go deeper as you dive down, put the head towards the ground. Release the arms, come all the way up, push the hips forward, stretch the whole front of the body, and then return to Pranamasana. Another variation, arms up over the head, come down, gracefully hands to the ground, and then lift the head, lift the body a little bit, shoulders over the fingertips, push into the ground with your hands, and then just lift up a little bit, slide back or walk back into Chaturanga, hovering just above the ground. Glide forward into upward facing dog, lift the hips and knees away from the ground. Push the chest forward, shoulders back. If you need to, you can just keep your hips on the ground.
back into downward facing dog. Put the seat up and back. Pulse a little bit, bow to the chest. Try to get your chest closer to the ground. Flatten up the arms. Lengthen from the seat all the way to the fingertips. Smooth line. Now we're going to lift the heels, bend the knees, look between the hands, push into the hands, and land your feet between your hands, hopping or walking. Pull the body down on the legs, press the legs straight if you have the flexibility. Come all the way up to standing. And then bring the hands back to the heart. One more time, arms up over the head, stretch the whole front of the body. Come down gracefully. Uttanasana. Lift again the chest and the head, shoulders over the fingertips, push into the hands. And just imagine your feet just gliding back on rollers. And come forward and up into upward facing dog or cobra. Just push hips forward a little bit, chest forward, hips between the hands. Pull the body up out of the hips a little bit more. Think like you're howling at the moon like a dog. And then back into downward facing dog. Melt the heart, the head comes towards the ground. If you're flexible, your head can rest on the ground. Feel like a dog stretching its back. Exhibit the loyalty of the dog to its master. Then lift the heels, bend the knees, look between the hands. Jump or walk your feet forward. Pull the body down onto the legs again. Come all the way up to standing. Reach up high above the head and bring the hands back to the heart. Inhale, exhale. Let go of all attachments to results, let go of all expectations. Just do the practice as though it were your divine duty to all. Release the arms. We'll do some down, standing, balancing postures now. So start off with tree moving to ballet pose. Stand firm on your left foot, pick up the right foot. You can either place the foot at the inseam of the leg like so, or if you're having toe bouncing, keep your toes on the ground. Just not against the knee, it's a little bit unstable there. If you have a lotus, you can bring your, uh, make your way into lotus. Hold on to the foot if you need to, or you can press the other foot against the inner hip. Bring your hands to the heart. And then raise your arms up above the head. Lengthen, try to go tall like a tree. See if you can take your gaze up. Anchor down through the toes or like the roots of your tree. Keep your left arm up, take hold of the foot, hold in the heel from the inside, the thumb behind the heel. If you can, you bring the leg out and up. If it's not possible, you can just hold the knee or hold under the, underneath the leg. Just do what you can. It's the effort that counts, just do your best. A little bit more flexible, lean a little bit towards the left, try to get your right foot right close to the head. Now engage leg muscles. Option here, try to release the foot without letting it drop. So we have to really engage the muscles. Try not to allow the foot to come down too low. And then engage your legs as you, as you come back down. Release. Try it on the other foot. Bring the right foot uh, standing on the right foot, bring the left foot into position, whichever um, variation suits you. Hands to the heart. And grow tall. Look up if you have good balance. Every pose reflecting devotion, love. From here, take the next variation, release the foot, take hold of the foot, keep, bring, keep your attention on a point, fix your focus, 
so that you can keep your balance. Try to get your toes the same height as the fingertips. And again, really keep that left leg strong and engaged. See if you can release the foot if you like. Slowly bring it down. One more, come to the back of the mat, raise your arms over the head. Step forward with the left foot, hinge, head comes to the height of the hips, bring the right leg up, warrior three. Straight and true in your lines and your intentions. If you need to, you can take your arms out to the side, or maybe even fingertips on the ground if you're having trouble balancing. like going further, interlace the fingers behind the back, bring the body down lower so that the belly is resting on your thigh, you can bend your left knee if you like, and then pick up your chest, bring it forward, bring the right foot up higher, arms coming over the head, top and tree, remember this is an option, you can just stay in your warrior three if you prefer. Press into your left foot, come back up. Try again on the other foot. Watch the body moving gracefully. Bring your arms up over the head, step forward with the right foot. Bring the head down to the height of the hips and bring the left leg up. Stand firm on the standing leg. Straight as an arrow. Option two, again, join your hands behind the back, open up the palms, bring the body down lower, bend the standing leg. And then lengthen your curve from the top of the head to the tips of the toes of the left foot. Press into your right foot to come back up. Breathe in, breathe out. I'll come back again. It's the back end of the mat. Step the left foot forward, lower the back knee down. Sink down to the seat. Now, just starting off by preparing the body for crescent moon, kapiyasana, push into the front knee. Imagine your pulling body about the hips. Bring, lean away from the leg. Then you can bring the arms up over the head, wiggle the shoulders, try to get the arms behind the side or behind the ears. Soon maybe the fingertips will come over the back toes. Keep your arms straight, arms bend. This is not the shape of a crescent moon. There's no kinks in that curve. Straighten out the arms. Coming back up, push into the front knee, press your way up. Shoulders over the hips, bend the toes under the back, on the back foot, legs are like a box. Raise your right arm up, bring the hand to the outside of the um, left knee, the other hand comes to the seat, push into the seat, pull down at the same time. Inhale, lift through the chest, then look behind. Keep body, bring the body up out of the hips, or you can lean back if you can. Take your fingertips, left fingertips, to the outside of the, of the heel. Feel free to stay there if you like, or go to the next progression, Padivita Pashvakanasana. If you want to do that one, the right arm comes back up, turn forward, then the elbow comes the outside of the thigh. Left fist in the right palm, push, down into your hands so the chest comes up. Center the chest comes to the thumbs and roll the left shoulder back. You can alternately take your hands in Anjali Mudra or you can take a bind if you know that version. Elbow comes underneath, in the space underneath the knee. Left arm over the back, 
Join the hands underneath the belly. Have a tug on that hand. Get the left shoulder back. Right hand holding the left wrist if you can. If you want, take the back knee up off the ground. Lengthen, push back through that left heel, extend through the crown, and then roll a little bit more. Break the pose. Come back into warrior two, the full version. So sink through the seat, open up your stance a little bit more. Strong like a warrior, courageous, determined, reflected in your demeanor. Then join the hands behind the back, pull the hands down, lift the chest, bring the head back. From here, come forward, go to the right a little bit so that you can slide your shoulder on the inside of the knee, bring the forehead towards or on the ground beside the foot. Sink your seat if it's too much. Lower down the right knee, and then do it from there. Have no judgment, just do your best, it's the effort that counts. Pull hands back down on the back, lift the head, and then bring your hands back down on the ground and inside the left foot. Rock back and forth, push off the roots of the toes. Lower the seat with each pass, and then push back through the right heel one more time, lower the knee, relax the toes. Roll to the right, see if you can get the right forearm down. Roll to the left, see if the left forearm will come down. Now extend to the top of the head. Exhale, keep sinking. Feels like you had weights in your hip pockets. If you're very flexible, Maybe you can bring your left arm to the outside the foot, rest your shoulder on the foot, and bring your chest flat on the ground. Fix your gaze like a lizard, it doesn't blink. Keep elongating the body from the top of the head to the toes. And now come back onto the hands. From here, bounce the right knee in, slide your left foot back, modified side plank. Push the hips forward, raise the left arm up. Now from here, you can raise the left leg up if you have the balance. If you want, you can bind the foot from behind. Take hold of your foot with your left hand. If you're more flexible, you're more advanced. Bring the elbow towards the shoulder, towards the hip. Bring the elbow up higher than the shoulder and then pull it forward. So you might be able to place the foot on the head. This is for if you're more advanced practitioner. And release. Step back into high plank and then back into downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out, soften. And then the right foot steps forward, back knee down. Sit down to the seat. And starting off by leaning away from the leg. Feel as though you're pulling the body out of the hips. Stretch the whole front of the body. When you're ready, kapyasana. Use whatever tricks you have in order to get more length in the pose. Visualize the crescent moon in your mind, radiate your own light through the pose. Good. And then come back up, press into the front knee. Lift back up, slide the right foot in, bend the toes under on the left foot, the legs like a box. Left arm comes up, take your hand to the outside of the right knee, lean back if you like, if you can bring your hand to the outer heel of the back foot, uh, feel free. Push the lower back up and in, 
Turn to the right. Keep your back nice and long. Try not to drop into your hips. You may stay here or progress to the next posture. Lift the left arm up. Angle the knee and the toes towards the left. And again, I'll do it this way so you can see from another angle. Right fist in your left hand. Push your hand, left hand, top hand into the bottom. Bring the center chest towards the thumbs and roll the right shoulder all the way back. Try to get your shoulders at the same height. Take the same variation as you did the, for the first time. So take a bind if you like. Lift the back knee up off the ground. All these are available to you. Just try to go to the edge of your potential and make it the best offering possible. And to promote progression in your practice. Keep trying new things. Break the pose gracefully. Warrior two. Look forward, sit down to the seat. Turn the body, the chest towards the left. Gaze over the front hand. And then join the hands behind the back. Pull the hands down. Lift the chest. Bring the right knee out a little bit for balance. And then go a little bit to the left. Dive down for humble warrior. Reflect surrender and humbleness. You drop your hips a little bit more, you might be able to get your head on the ground. And engage your core, come up halfway, release your hands down on the ground, turn forward, spin on the back foot, rock back and forth. Push through the toes, the base of the toes. And then bring the left knee down, back toes flatten. And then if you can, roll to the left, get the left form down. Maybe the right form can come down as well. If not, just stay on your hands. Pull the chest forward, anchor down through the hips. For those, of course, who can, come flat on your chest. Make sure the knee doesn't fall out away from the shoulder. Keep it close, hugging the shoulder. Move the foot out a little bit so that it's underneath the knee. Then getting ready to come back. Press into your hands. Scooch the left knee in this way and then extend the right leg back. The left shoulder is a little bit in front, left hand is a little bit in front of the shoulder for balance. Come into modified side plank. Push your hips forward. We press down through that left shin. Raise the right leg up. Float it. Progress if you like. Bend the knee. Take hold of the foot. Pull it back. Stretch the front of the body. Look over your right shoulder. Make sure you don't drop into your left shoulder. Keep the arms strong. Or if you have the flexibility, bring the elbow right in towards the hip crease. You have to bend the foot a little bit. Pull the elbow up as high as you can. Higher than the shoulder so that when it comes around, you're still moving the shoulder the way it naturally does, not forcing the shoulder. And then you can maybe take the foot to the head if you're quite flexible. Always move according to your condition. And then release. Back into modified side plank. Back into table. So from here, just come down into child's pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Slide your hands back. You can do hair pose. 
with the hands beside your feet. Bring the forehead close to the knees and then lift your seat up. Try to get your hips over your knees so that you roll more on the top and maybe a little back on the back of the head. If it's too uncomfortable, walk your head a little bit further forward so that it's not you're not on the back of the neck when your seat comes up over the knees. Otherwise, you can take perhaps your fingertips pressing to the ground. Make sure they're not beside your head. They're in front where your knees are on nice and wide on the outside of the mat. And then walk your feet towards your hands, between your hands perhaps. Take the left leg up and then just pulse up and down here. Push off the roots of your toes. As you lift your heel, push back through the left foot. Eventually you might be able to just bend your toes back so your foot is not even on the ground. As you get more balance, you might be able to press into your fingertips and bring your legs level with your hips, your feet level. Okay, so keep your knees very bent. Move with control. Don't move too fast. Don't jump aggressively. So go right to the other side. Alternatively, you can do this against the wall. So you face the wall and you place your walk your way up the wall. Imagine I'm walking your feet up the wall and then you take one foot back and then you just pull your toes away from the wall. Just like I'm doing, okay? More advanced, so you can come on to your index fingers at the very tip. And then do whatever you like, the more advanced. Practice according to your condition, your ability level, your comfort level. And come back down. Back in child's pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Soften everything. Roll your way up. Let's come into um, rabbit pose. Open up your knees a little bit more so your knees are about two inches from each end of the mat. Bring your heels together. Fingertips behind your feet, lift up your hips, and then walk your right hand forward onto your right heel, your left hand forward. Fingers facing towards the toes, lock the baby fingers together. Then push your hips forward so you try to, you're about to fall onto your thighs. Bring your head all the way back, stretch the whole front of the body. Right hand placed on the seat, left hand on the other side of the seat. Push into the seat, pull down, bring your chin into your chest and come up. Come into Balasana, baby pose. Open up the knees, big toes together, and come forward, forehead on the ground. Breathe in, breathe out. Now from here, going to walk our hands back, close the knees together, and just turn onto our back. Come onto the back. Keep your feet close to the seat. If you can, you can lift your feet, pull them right against the seat. Keep holding on to the ankles. Tuck your shoulders under a little bit. Move your arms right close to the body, and then lift up your hips. Your knees will be over the toes at this point, so just try to push into your feet. Try to get your chest closer to the chin, so the chin looks like a wall. And then move your arms again underneath a little bit more. You don't have to hold on to your ankles if it's not possible. Just You can also interlace your fingers underneath your body, underneath your seat. Push your chest forward, curl the tail under. You can use your hands if you like to guide your hips forward so the tail curls under a little bit more. No wrinkles in the lower back. Feel strong, hip supported or not. 
Raise your right leg up, straight. Bend the knee, bring the foot down. Anchor down through the right foot. Left knee up and then straight up. Toes over the hips. Pushing into your upper arms. Your hands on the seat to throw on your seat. And then bring that left foot down. Then flatten your hands, bring the hands underneath your seat, palms facing down, and just lower your seat onto your hands. Extend your legs, push into the lower arms, lift the back up off the mat, arch the back, chest up, and bring the top of the head to the ground. Fish pose. Try not to hunch your shoulders forward, pull them back. Try to get your head closer to the seat. And now, bust streak of breath. Be very fast and nose like a sniffing dog. Keep going if you want. You can raise your legs 12 inches off the mat. Charge the legs. Lower the legs down, break the pose, push into the upper arms, release, breathe in, breathe out, soften everything. Arms over the head and come to seated position. You can roll on your side if that's easier. Bend your knees if you need to, Paschimottanasana. Raise your arms up, pull the body up out of the hips, and then drape the body forward. Land your belly onto your thighs. Take hold of the other feet or the ankles, and can, or you can hold underneath and hug your legs from underneath. Push the chest forward, and exhale, pour more weight into the legs. If you get your legs flat on the ground, don't waste your time. Just Go into the pose. See if you can pull your chest forward as we're trying to get beyond the knees. Imagine the top of the head coming to touch the front of the feet. Anchor down through the seat. Bring all the attention to the base of the spine. Behind your back, fingers facing away from the body, purple tanasana. Slide your heels in a little bit and then push the hips up, shoulders higher than the uh, chest, higher than the shoulders. Roll the thighs under and get your toes to come down. If this is too much, move your heels underneath your knees for bench pose. Try not to sag through the hips, keep them up. Okay, so now I'll about a streak of breath again. Head back. in and lower the seat down. Cross the ankles, place your hands down, and from here come on to the belly. Join the hands behind the back, Shalambhasana. Pull the shoulders back, engage the buttocks again, and the upper back muscles, shoulder blades squeeze against one another. Lift the chest on the half breath in, Raise the legs up. Feels like trying to reach for the heels. The whole body singing with effort. Keep on breathing. Lower down softly. Breathe in. Breathe out.
bend the knees, bring the heels up towards the seat, hold on to the ankles if you can. Flex the toes, half breath in, lift the chest, and push the ankles back into your hands. Your thighs can stay on the ground here, or if you can, pull on the feet, raise the thighs up off the mat. Again, don't hold the breath. Keep tugging on the legs, you're more flexible. Try to straighten your legs more, look up, you might be able to see your toes. Pull the heels in towards the seat, lower down. You breathe in, breathe out, relax. And from here, just flip onto your back. Arms up to the side. Bring your, uh, take the knees up into your chest again and then pull your feet down or move your feet on either side of the hips. Walk your feet out to the edges of the mat. And then from here, bring both knees down over to the right. Try to form a nice long line from the left shoulder all the way down to the left knee. Point the left knee towards the front, the far end of the mat in front. Try not to lift, the, try not to push, uh, get the front of the shoulder to jut up. Pressing the backs of shoulders down so the chest stays nice and flat. Same with the shoulders. Now you can slide your right foot onto the outside of the left knee and use a foot to just hold that left knee down and try to get the right knee down as well again. on the knee, lift the knees up again, adjust your feet, walk your feet in and out to the other edges of the mat, go to the left, drop the knees over to the left, again you can slide your left foot and just place the foot on the outside on top of the left, the right knee and then pull it down, use it to hold the knee down, arms out, stretched, your hands out to away from the body your shoulders will flatten a little bit more then release bring your knees back up and then just slide your feet out in front bring them beyond the edge of the mat shavasana just allow your body to rest just relax everything. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, imagine you're fainting. Let go of all fatigue. Allow all the tension, the efforts to just drop out of the body. Make yourself more receptive to receiving all the benefits of the practice. The more you surrender, the more you make yourself receptive to receiving. Imagine all the love, the wellness, the health, the radiant health, the peace of mind flooding in to the body. Just watch it inside of you, just moving all, rippling all towards the spiritual heart located at the right side of the physical heart, the residing place of the highest self. God. And God is the portion of us that exists in all beings, that divine essence. And when we offer
offered up to God, it gets, goes out to all beings everywhere. gentle and reverent way, in a quiet way to return from Shavasana, starting to come back into the body, awaken it gently. Think of this as your temple for, the, for God who resides within, so treat it with care, treat it with reverence. As a result, treat all beings with reverence. For we are all the same, we are all connected through God. Now come back to seated position. Thank you so very much for joining.